Hello. Um, so um, I'm just going to talk a little bit, um, not to bore you to death or anything, but um, I, I really um, think that talking about, about poetry, as nerdy as that could be, uh, is really important. So um, uh, I'll start by talking about uh, what it means to me to come full circle. Um, I started writing when I first heard spoken word when I was 11 years old. Um, I was put into this uh, youth coalition, the Filipino Youth Coalition, if anyone knows of that. Yeah. Right, right? <laughs> and uh, a lot of people don't know that it kind of, in a lot of ways, was started because of gang affiliation and uh, gang activity in California. And um, I was put into that kind of as, as rehab by my parents. Um, and I came out with that with a great foundation for with history and art. And, um, and so I started with that. Um, then I went to school for, for poetry. I went to San Francisco State and graduated last year. I'm getting my master's. Thank you. I getting my master's in the fall um, and um, in poetry as well. Um, but um, I I wanted to say that uh, full, full circle isn't just um, learning something and then um, doing it or continuing it later, but it needs to pass it on as well. Um, I heard um, I heard Juan Felipe Herrera speak about um, a poet named Itzolin Garcia. And um, I, I have a painting downstairs that's um, called The Making of a Poet, and it's dedicated to Itzolin. Um, and he told the story of this, this really dope poet who had a lot of pressure on him by his parents and other people to go to school, get a PhD, but all he wanted to do was write. And he kept struggling with that and would go back and forth and say, ah, I gotta get my PhD, but I want to write, what should I do? And went back and forth and back and forth. He eventually went to get his PhD and, um, and then he killed himself. Um, so uh, that painting downstairs means a lot to me. Um, and it's, it's, to me, it's, um, it's a huge message of following what you want to do. And that, that message alone made me um, find this book by Trong Tran. I'm not sure if you guys know about him. He's a really dope Vietnamese writer. And he um, wrote a poem called For Itzo. And so things get passed along. Like Juan Felipe Herrera is Mexican-American, but he passed that story along to, uh, or he knew Itzolin, Trong Tran knew Itzolin. And so um, that gets passed along. That, that got translated to me in school. And uh, I think when we hear about writers of color, we are inspired to do our own thing and tell our own stories. So. Um, <coughs> When I was in college, I didn't know many writers of color, and I was the only Filipina in most of my classes. And so it was important to me to recognize where my stories come from and how to tell those stories with respect. Um, this poem is, um, is just um, a little poem that um, incorporates both Mexican-American and Filipino-American writers, um, because my son is, is a mix um, of mixed background. Um, this is called, Splendid thing that sprouts from the earth and blooms in the air. For Nishi Matahum, the daughter I thought I had in my belly. And I say daughter that I thought I had in my belly because he came out a boy. Um, so, <laughs> but so this is, this is for, for him. She comes to me in specks of dust trailing behind green moths. Reminders of inexperienced choices that led me to her miraculous fluttering, inescapable. I found her name in a dream about war, isolation, blood, and resilience. A path dips and twists before me. It is layered with black thorns, ditches, gray mud, whips, rosaries, and chains. I welcome it on both knees. A seed sprouting two sets of roots needs twice as much good soil, and so I will give it in the marvelous bullets of Ricardo Flores Magón, Praxedis Guerrero's callous free and dustless knees, the quick breaths of Jose Garcia Villa, and the fists of Sixto Lopez. She will know the curly tongues of invasive insects, feel the emerald beating of hummingbird wings, endure the burn of red suns and the unstoppable unraveling of winter, frost on her leaves. 
for her protection, the poetry of Hagedorn, Villanueva, the pigeon artillery of Lindmark, the feet of Ninochka, Sandra Cisneros' Never Marry a Mexican, and Moraga's lessons on loving in the war years, because that is when it's needed most. As her petals close for the night, stories of the epic battle of Mactan and Lapu Lapu will sweeten her, or a folk tale of why mango trees laugh as one passes will open more possibilities for sleep and for mourning. Thank you.